So I was sitting here thinking, how can I apply this like new understanding to chemistry? <clears throat> Where I kind of arrived at the conclusion that like a channel is a proton. And when it's filled, it has like an electron filling it. And then when it's bonded, maybe closed off, like it, that that like segment becomes closed. Like it has one of the conduits go down, like the like over here, the tab, like the doorway closes by an energetic bond closing it, so it becomes kind of like a neutron. <clears throat> making it have three components, not just the channel, but also the component within it as the electron, proton, channel, uh, electron, component within, and then anti-neutrino as the tab to like seal the, the inlet, basically, the, to close the door. <clears throat> and I'm like, how can I look at chem? So I started looking at chemistry, looking at orbitals a little bit. Kind of trying to think through this. Like, how can I apply this to that? <laughs> and I'm like, well, let's think about this. What? It occurred to me that I'm like, what is a hydrogen? Let's start with hydrogen, first of all. So I start with hydrogen. Notice I'm on helium. So let's go over here. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You know, let's just, let's draw. A channel. Maybe we'll make this background first real quick. There's a big old rectangle. Give it a different fill color. Oops. Maybe something not too bright. Like it's not white. It's just uh, ah. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh. Uh. Maybe. Huh. Alright, that's fine. That's just, okay, that's better. Eh. Okay, now I'll just use more like this. Okay, okay. Let's say. We need pen. And background. Uh, I guess I can just write on it. I don't know. Let me see if I can write on it. Nope. Let's combine these. Combine. Group. Can't group them. I don't know. Uh, can I not draw on this rectangle? I can't like get it below the background. <laughs> Alright, no rectangle. Fine. So be it. Okay. So be it. Let's go. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. I was sitting here and I... I wrote... <clears throat> Electron orbitals must represent stable polygonal progressions and filling in of the material of the segments of shells as electrons. Once a stable polygon fills, the next shape of a ring has a certain number of spaces relative to the other that make up channels. And then I had this thought, this is really where I was like, okay, now I'm thinking. <laughs> Hydrogen is a single channeled polygon. So I was thinking like a channel. <clears throat> Maybe let's make this a little bigger, like six. I was thinking like here's a channel, right? 
like through here. Makes sense. <laughs> but what I wasn't really thinking was like, here's another channel. <laughs> so this is a two channeled system. That's where I'm like, oh. So let's say here's a, looking at those islands, let's take a look at some islands. Because islands are representative of polygons. <clears throat> so, like, over here, let's find some that actually have, a, like, a single channel polygon. So this might represent, like, a straight-up hydrogen atom. It's not filled, so it's bonded to something. <clears throat> but, like, it can have material fill it, and what happens then... So let's draw this. Here's a boundary, right, of a... Maybe I'll do it over here. Here is a boundary, just an opening into some kind of chamber. That realistically probably has both an inlet. Let's draw it with another color. Uh, both an inlet. Oops. And an outlet. Or vice versa in terms of top or bottom. And maybe that re reflects on something about spin. Like whether or not it comes in this way. Because then the, the spin of the current is this way. Whereas if it came in this way, then the spin would be in the opposing direction. <clears throat> okay. So, this though is a, let's go back to this color. is a space in which currents can flow, pretty much. <clears throat> and so if we look at hydrogen, isotopes, let's see if I can just go back to it. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute, here we go. Just here, here proton. So if we imagine this is an empty polygon like this so let's say this is h11 proteum <clears throat> so it's just got this space which then behaves as a positive charge interacting with the current, which is essentially filling the space. Okay. Now, what happens on the next hydrogen is it has a proton and a neutron. So like I said, a proton is a chamber like this, whereas a neutron it would be closed off. So it's almost like it has an, a chamber that probably grows in, in size, like it doesn't stay exactly the same. That kind of builds like a mass over here. through an inlet that kind of blocks off. <clears throat> and then the current comes in 
and comes out, producing a current here. Okay, so again, we have another positive proton aspect, and here. Just a, a a neutron, I guess, zero charge. <clears throat> and then blue is the current itself flowing in, filling the space. <clears throat> and so we got this deuterium, which we can imagine is stable, but not as stable as the first chamber, which is H21. Okay, and then one more like stable form of hydrogen, H. 3-1 tritium, which luckily we got an example of. We got an example of. We were just talking about it in my last video here. <clears throat> Where the currents from this system that's rotating. So let me just pull up Mount Grenar. This system right here, Datar Pur, I believe it's called. Datar Pur, Pur, Par, pardon me. <laughs> that's rotating is colliding here with this system that's rotating, creating this boundary. But then there's a current coming in this way that's colliding with this current coming out this way. So it basically comes into this region here and it just creates this triangle. Mind you, it kind of needs like surrounding currents to form it. So this is probably a, a very important aspect. Like it's, it has like a wind blowing in the, the, the channel, basically. There's a current coming in the channel. That's enough to like open up the polygon, but it's not enough to totally break the polygon apart. So it starts to circulate. <clears throat> So instead of having a more uh, square rectangular type of shape, like this one's probably squarish, like boundaries, and then this one becomes more rectangular, where this one becomes more triangular. So let's say maybe like this. In terms of the chamber. <clears throat> and then again, it just pushes until it creates neutrons that fill the space of the of the larger polygon. So let me draw these polygons here. Like there's probably a space between it, so maybe I should go out this way. Like like there's a channel around there probably. Like currents tend to do. <clears throat> okay, and then I'll just draw this one real quick. And it's probably best on the outer side. Uh, da -da. Uh, da -da. Uh, da -da. Okay, maybe I can fill that in. Nope. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, in terms of. 
I'm learning, obviously. So this probably, let's just say, comes in, goes around kind of thing, and comes out. And pretty much creates a spiral there. With some currents, like, around here. Like, probably, maybe I'll just draw that. Around, maybe a bit coming in here, too. And just kind of flowing around it, too, to come out. <coughs> probably the same over here. Around the barrier there. Okay. Then we can go back to red, put a positive charge here, <coughs> back to whatever I chose there for that, grayish, <laughs> not quite black, okay, now. Maybe I, maybe I didn't draw this one quite right because this actually is revealing. Because it's not stable. Look at that. There's a current coming through here. Like It wants to go through the polygon. And you know what happens when it goes through the polygon? Two channels. Where were we? <laughs> no. Helium. Okay. This is where I was, like, mentally, consciously. Was in this place of two channels. Actually, actually, actually. Thinking about it, it if it becomes a triangle, right? Where it has, like, a neutron over here. Here's a neutron. Here's a neutron. <clears throat> and then it creates a new channel. It's probably going to create more of like a square like this. Neutron. Neutron. Current flow. Oh, dang! I'm like I'm, I'm like I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Why did I not choose that? I felt like I like chose it. Right? Uh, so this comes through. Interesting. Maybe, maybe it doesn't shape itself like this because it kind of seems like it would still. Maybe it just connects through energetically. So there's a channel through here. Like a full channel through, connecting the, the like, probably ammonite-like protons at that point, because then there's going to be a flow this way. <clears throat> this flow will probably, I guess, go this way. At that point, maybe it just behaves more like this. Like, once it breaks through the tritium boundary, like the here. Like it's, it's, it's cycling here, just rotating, rotating, rotating. But, it, but what it's also doing here is, like, helping keep more pressure here and pushing this way on this boundary to break it. So then it kind of shapes out like this way and becomes more like this with just, like, a, two neutrons. And kind of almost like a galactic shape to it with the above and below here. So let's say this is probably a positive charge and positive charge equivalents. Like right here, this segment and this segment. Where there's kind of just large basins versus large masses. And so we have helium... Four, two. <clears throat> I 
So let's go back to helium. Oh. I guess I talked to them. Isotopes of helium. Okay, so I was looking at this one. Nine known to isotopes of helium. With three protons. Helium three. Or with two protons. <laughs> I was reading this, I guess. There is a light stable. One neutron. Ew. Only stable isotope with more protons than neutrons. So let's go back to here. <clears throat> and imagine that this current kind of just like takes out one of the masses here. So let's say here goes like this. And like this maybe. So it still has, although it probably would it would shrink to more, maybe let's say it goes more like this. Like it's gonna keep the top mass. So let's say it keeps the top mass. And then there's an outlet here. But the other two sort of combine into one larger system. So how would they do that? Maybe like, like it just more like this. I don't know. And this kind of flows. Let's just do black for the masses there. Neutron. Flows in across here, up here, here. But then over here, like this cross flow is probably creating some backflow. So there's probably like a big like thing like this going on with like two systems, maybe even. <clears throat> like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's put some uh, pasties on those guys. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, guys, settle down. <laughs> okay, so this uh, looks pretty solid. Like, we might have just made a reasonable helium 3-2 stable system path where just one of these masses kind of gets removed by the currents from enough enough current removes it and then it, but not too much to like break the system apart or basically okay so what else we got in helium All I said, okay, only helium three and helium four are stable. So we got those two are stable. Anything else, it just starts ballooning. Like at that point, this balloons. Okay, so let's move on to lithium. Is that next? <laughs> I think that's next. Uh, okay, okay, I'm, I'm correct in that. Okay, good. Two ice and stable isotopes, six and seven. So, maybe I'll get a little caught up here to the point where I can't progress without just, like, needing to not be recording so much. <laughs> oh, you're kind of just sitting there. 
This might get us a little caught up on. But I think we can work through the periodic table this way if we so choose. So here we have the, so let's say instead of um, it removing the mass, it instead carves another hole here. <clears throat> so maybe it has an, like three inlets, like kind of like this, like it tends towards like either here or here. It tends to carve by the current and outlet, like, like in a shape specifically. Let's, let's say where the original shape of helium was just like the square. So it probably comes in that way with the node. Let's say the node is there still and then has that outlet. But then it has another channel. Oops. I guess I'm not really drawing. Uh, how's this gonna, how am I going to draw this? Let's see. Okay, this is coming down. Opening. Opening. Okay. And then we'll put in protons. Or neutrons. Neutron. Neutron, how many neutrons does this lithium, base lithium have, just two? <clears throat> so I would say lithium five or something, is that? Lithium six, two stable isotopes, okay, so not. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a channel, let's go through the currents and maybe we'll realize that this like has to change its shape. Because they probably just, like, vibrate out of this once the channel is opened, let's say. Like, it's just not stable with this side channel. Because, like, what's going on here? Now it starts pressuring this system specifically here without, like, a pressure here. So it probably starts pushing over here. which then elongates this side in some way. So let's say <clears throat> we might need like a progression. It's like one of those video games that just the levels get diff more and more difficult and challenging to figure out like the sequencing <laughs> to, to properly make it through. Okay. How does this happen? So let's assume because of this like divide in the current that there is also a divide in this. <sighs> does that make sense? <clears throat> let's just think it through. That seems pretty reasonable. That the currents would kind of cause a divide here and then start to push a mass here and a mass, mass here. So then, maybe let's make this a, another color. I like changing it up. Let's go straight up, change it up to orange. That's fun. Okay. So let's say we just got this little mound here. Maybe it's elongating is what I'm thinking. So it may not quite represent the shape. <clears throat> How would three mounds prefer to shape themselves? Probably like between the three fingers. Hmm. Let's draw mounds first. So mound, mound, and maybe they change their shape a little bit around the current, like the current uh, is more shaping them like this.
Uh, does that make sense? I don't think that makes sense. The current's not balanced like that. It's just not balanced like that. I think it's legitimately more like this, like a more a more round, like stable nucleus of a neutron, and then two sort of elongated ones. But way closer, probably. Like, just with a channel down them. Maybe even more like that. Like a yin and yang, probably. That's it. Let's do that. Let's just straight draw this one as a yin yang. Where the current was able to go through. <clears throat> Which would probably make sense why I would curve that way in that instance at least. At you guys is leisure. That would maybe press it out a bit. I don't know. It kinda go like that. <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe I want to do that though. Let's go back a little to here. Get that a little closer to there. <clears throat> okay. I'm not sure if this makes complete sense that there's like a dividing neutron <clears throat> that ultimately, like, as it divides, it becomes literally two neutrons in mass because the currents are piling up in, in a way that do that. But it kind of makes sense to me, so let's just go ahead and just do that, and do this. Okay. Do this. And probably also this. And this. <clears throat> okay. So maybe, maybe then, because of this, it creates a region here, and a region here, or, I'm not sure how that would influence that. Uh, I want to say there, like, doing that, though, like, like, it's going through this channel, but it's really probably also opening up this region creating like that <clears throat> so let's do it again let's say maybe it's doing that So if it's doing that, it's probably widening this to straighten this more like this. Or, yeah, straighten this more like this and then round it off around that. And then the channel somewhere like that. And then a similar thing there. So it's just kind of pushing this segment down to kind of widen that. To ultimately come to a, this kind of shape <clears throat> with a neutron up here that's probably of equal mass to, uh, how do I draw this? Like the, I guess they maybe even like sort of separate like this. I 
I don't know if I drew that quite as I intended, but hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> Where there's then a current across this way, also through here, through here. But like a sp uh, two little positive things there, maybe. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Let me go back to here. Oh, I see. I called that protons. So this is probably a proton. But then this would maybe be one? I don't know. Let's say... Because <laughs> at this point, this is complex enough where it's like... This will take some time, maybe. <laughs> some more investigations. Let's say there's three protons there, three neutrons, and uh, three inlets. So three electrons, I guess. Or... <clears throat> Free electrons, or something. Seven, so four neutron. So I guess seven would be the case where the other neutron does the same thing. Just like two yin and yangs. Or probably the other way, actually. It would do it more like from the middle up, like this. And then down like this. I know I drew over top it, but you know what I'm saying. And then the flows, and not in the color and all, but the flows would just be probably somehow this would count as three. I'm just in terms of protons. Uh, also, with the channel down here or up there, either or. Although that seems way less stable. I don't know why I would do both. Okay. Well, I think that was pretty useful. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Peace, guys.